Hello everyone! Recently, you saw the official trailer for Phantom Liberty, and today we have a special treat. I sat down with narrative director Igor Sajinsky, and together we took a deep dive into some of the cool new stuff we showed off in the video. If you missed the trailer, let's start by watching it first. There's gotta be a way out of this. Johnny, I'm dying. There's nothing can stop that. V. My name is Songbird. I'm an NUS intelligence analyst. I know about the bomb ticking in your head. And I can save your life. What's the catch? I need you to get to Dogtown. Attention all Dogtown residents. The president managed to crash her Space Force One into our humble district. Man's got a thousand and one reasons to want Myers as a hostage. Sleeper agents. Time to wake them up. So NUSA is tossing us back into the fray, huh? Stay sharp. We're in the wolf's den now. Get Myers out of there. Time to evac. Her safety is the top priority. Shit! They catch us out here, we're dead. Wait, hear that? God Almighty, it's moving! Run! This way, quick! Someone ratted us out. You know, V, treason ain't ever black and white. It's a charade, V. Wherever she goes, people get hurt. Bodies drop. Just want what Songbird promised me. The cure. The situation has changed. I need to know if you're with me. Illusion of freedom draws in the desperate. Pick your truth, V. Come on. Got iron in your head. Gotta put it to someone's head. Pull the trigger. If I don't do anything and do it soon, I'll die. Awesome stuff, a lot to take in. Thankfully, I have narrative director Igor Stojinski here with me. Igor, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. Hey. We'll be going clip by clip and we'll be uh, dissecting what we just saw. And we'll start with the setting, Dogtown. Um, looks like a lot of chaos, a lot of control maybe in this part of Night City, but tell me more. Yeah, uh, pretty right, actually. Uh, Dogtown, formerly known as Combat Zone, uh, but renamed to Dogtown by one Kurt Hansen. Uh, it's the guy who you saw on the billboard. He's current uh, ruler of, uh, of Dogtown, and this uh, mix between a tyrant, a protector, but first of all, a businessman. Um, our inspiration when creating Dogtown with its internal dynamics and politics, and also Kurt Hansen's character, were um, South American drug lords, guys who invest into local communities, build schools, bridges, become those you know, reverent figures, yeah. but actually at the same time to treat, treat those communities as a cover-up to of all course. their you know, dirty, shady yeah. deals, drugs, weapons, yeah. you name it. Caring for the community. Yeah, caring for, caring for the community. Yeah, and uh, this is exactly the, the case here. Uh, Kurt controls Dogtown, at mm -hmm. least parts of it, um, using Bargast. Uh, okay. Bargast is this, his military unit. It's like part gang, part military unit, actually. It consists of both Militech soldiers from Kurt's unit who stayed behind in, uh, in Night City during the last corporate war, decided mm -hmm. not to come back home and just make this area their own. And also it consists of like different gangers, marauders who joined, you know, since, uh, since then. Interesting mix of people coming from different walks of lives. Yeah, and uh, they aren't exactly the most sorted out military unit. Uh, sometimes they do things on their own, but for sure they all very much respect Kurt and his like word is, you know, just... Saying. He's the boss. He's, He's the, the boss. boss. Yeah. Doctown itself is actually a very interesting place, full of contrasts. Um, is this weird mix of, yeah, as you said, like authority and anarchy. You have areas which are controlled by Bargas mm -hmm. and uh, uh, also like safe uh, in a way. Um, you can find, you know, rave parties under the stars That's in cool. other places. 
uh, other places are just so dangerous that almost no one goes there and it's very easy to get killed there. Um, trauma doesn't uh, come to, to Dogtown I'm because, not surprised. <laughs> because it's too dangerous. Um, actually, the whole district was supposed to be this kind of like paradise entertainment slash casino hotel strip. Okay. But the whole development was interrupted by uh, by the war. And now you have this, it's more like a squat uh, mixed with the free trade zone. Um, and this free trade is actually a big selling selling point of Dogtown, uh, let's say, um, because it's a place free of corpus, but most importantly, free of corpus taxes. Yeah. Uh, so um, if you want to do some kind of deal, Dogtown is the place. Um, on the black market here, you can find all kinds of stuff from uh, some weird tech you wouldn't find even in uh, in Kabuki as uh, custom, you know, something, custom cyberware, um, to stolen uh, stolen corporate equipment, to even if you are, you know, coming from a different part of the world and you need it for your internal needs, a tank. Yeah, would you like one? Yeah, me, totally. I could I could always use a tank. But yeah, don't, don't get your hopes up. You cannot buy a tank and go with Johnny and go to uh, Arasaka Tower and destroy everything. Don't even think about it. But it is a place if you're if you're in pretty much in the market for something like this, you can you can get it. Yep, there. this is yeah. the place. Crazy, crazy and also awesome at the same time. Let's move on. Uh, we're seeing a character appear throughout this video and she is called Myers. Um, she seems to be a prominent figure. Like, what, tell, what can you tell me about her? And what's her relationship with 2V or the player in this case? This is uh, President Rosalind Myers, uh, president of NUSA, um, right now in a bit of a pickle due to the crash landing of her Space Force One inside, um, inside Dogtown. She's, uh, as all characters, we try to create um, we try to give him like different aspects to them. So they're just not like a, a function, you know, yeah. this is the president who gives <laughs> orders. And we try to look for different like faces and aspects in Myers too. Yeah. So um, she's a former Marine, a soldier, a very- She, she looks like she's capable with yeah, a gun. She's very yeah. capable. <laughs> she's, a, she's a badass actually, but maybe even for her, the whole Vargas forces and, you know, whole dog down against her is maybe even too much for her. And this is where V comes in to mm -hmm. help to help her get out of there. But it's not the only, you know, like face of Myers, let's say. She's also uh, a very capable and um, like logically thinking politician. At the same time, she has this human human aspect to her and like there will be moments where like emotions take over let's say. Uh, so I hope players will find her uh, like a complex and interesting character. Yeah, she looks she looks freaking amazing. Okay, uh, next up, we have some some giant thing waking up. And what is that thing? Looks scary. Am I, am I supposed to be afraid of that? <laughs> uh, well, you might, yeah. This is a um, Militech Chimera. Um, it's part of this uh, Militech equipment left behind during, uh, during the last corporate war. Mm -hmm. A remnant, you could even say a ghost of the past, actually, but maybe some things shouldn't be left behind because in the wrong hands they can cause a total mayhem, which might be a case in this um, uh, in, in, in okay. here as well. Uh, Chimera is equipped with all kinds of weapons and might or might not be obstacle on these uh, adventures. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a challenge. We'll see. We'll see. He just he just did the eyebrows and that's it. Okay. Okay. I get it. I get it. Next up, Star Power. Um, Idris Elba, aka Solomon Reed. Uh, important character for this story, but how important and what's his relationship to V? One of the most important, actually, uh, I would say that um, together, yeah, with uh, Reed, V, and Songbird, uh, sort of like three most important characters uh, here. Reed is this kind of guy that if you want to change a government in another country, this is the guy you send there and it just kind of happens. No one ever finds out how. Nice. And uh, yeah, but it did happen. Um, a master spy working for NUSA for many, many years, um, recruiting agents, doing those kinds of like super difficult missions. Around seven years ago, put on a back burner, became mm -hmm. a sleeper agent. And now during the course of Phantom Liberty story, he's woken up uh, again nice. and will be working closely with V on a mission in, uh, in Mission Dogtown. It's not always going to be necessarily super smooth, mm -hmm. but well, you know, conflict is storytelling. So this is like what we want here. Perfect. Um, and as with Myers and any other character, like we try to create 
um, a complex layered character even more so with such an amazingly cool actor as mm -hmm. Idris Elba to play him like you want to you know get the most out of out of it, out of him. And so um, Reed is, for example, he's super loyal, mm -hmm. but those loyalties, they can clash sometimes. He's both loyal to you know, the greater good, the, the, um, the safety of, uh, of the country, of the state, but he's also very loyal to the people who are close to him. And at the same time, there are like, certain principles inside him, which he also wants to stay true to. And those loyalties, sometimes they, yeah, they might love that. pull him into different directions, push and pull and so on. And he will be facing some difficult choices, which V will also have a chance to like affect. Yeah, it's amazing that you mentioned this because whenever you guys create characters, I feel like they have, like you said, like different directions that are kind of pulling on them. And they're not very like linear. They're not like, okay, this is my one loyalty and motivation. There's multiple things, which makes them more relatable and makes them more human mm -hmm. in this case. Um, it's also an interesting part of like writing process really, because first when you create characters, usually they're, they are a little bit more like functional or like a little bit simpler, mm -hmm. but then with every dialogue you write, every rewrite, re every iteration of the story, they kind of become like, full and become their own characters in a way and in the end you feel it's actually a person and not just this um, like design you made and um, I think we went through this path with uh, with Reed as well. Yeah, yeah, amazing, amazing stuff. I can't wait for players to actually discover it for themselves and uh, have their own opinion on the character because I feel like opinions about characters is something that we're kind of known for and something that the community always dissects and then has like these you know discussions on on social media talking about like do i like this character or dislike this character so it's something really really this good. is what i'm really hoping for in this case yeah, yeah perfect perfect all right moving on next up we have a character changing her appearance and this is something that we haven't seen before is this something just kind of playing into the spy genre spy theme of the expansion what I really love about games is that they are usually just much bigger than movies, just in terms of like pure runtime mm -hmm. of hours to spend with it. Yeah. And so you don't really want to spend all this time just like in just one, um, like one approach, one angle to it. And spy thriller is a very like potent and rich genre you can take from different places. Mm -hmm. And there are like different fantasies to it. So you have this super agent uh, yeah. fantasy, right? Which is like Mission Impossible <laughs> or James Bond, you know, cool gadgets, yeah. making use of them, being super cool and smooth and so on. And this, for example, would be, you know, aspect of this. Mm -hmm. But we also got inspired by many like other, other things. You can have different approaches. You can have this um, Born, which I personally really yeah. lo love this series. One is just one man against the agency, against this power, trying to, es you know, trying to escape and like outsmart them. You can have this uh, fantasy from like Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, mm -hmm. when you actually work for the agency, but it's this w w crazy intrigue of like, you know, lies and uh, of super smart people trying to, you know, outsmart one another and you just have to be, you know, the top dog in this yeah. case. Um, there's the spy game and um, first and foremost though, we tried to draw inspirations from actually from real world. Places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, from uh, books, interviews, uh, reportages about real agents, real spy okay. uh, operations that happened all around the world. We always in our games try to create this like grounded, um, grounded base. Mm -hmm. So it's not just like a remix of another things you saw, yeah, yeah. A remix of a remix in a way, but there's something really true and relevant to it. And so in the end, you kind of try to end up with something that's both like cool and, and recognizable, but at the same time um, uh, real and unique. Yeah. Um, and also the setting, right? Night City also is something, that, and actually cyberpunk as a genre kind of plays into this because the high tech and also kind of everything being kind of dark, it kind of plays to the whole to the whole thing. Plus then, you, like you said, you have the movies, you also have real spies, so actually real people who worked in the field and you're also pu pulling from all these directions and adding the cyberpunk motif and theme to it and actually building this, this something yeah. that is familiar, yet different at the same time. Yeah, exactly. In the end, we want to end up with something new and unique and fresh mm -hmm. and like 
I'm always looking for something that hasn't been done before yeah. and like, or maybe not in, in this way. And we try to put our own spin uh, on, you know, uh, on this. We added even a little spy, uh, spice of um, spice, spice of uh, <laughs> 80s and 90s uh, action movies, which I think make it all a little bit more just dense and exciting. Nice. Um, and yeah, I, uh, I hope it worked out. Last question and last clip that we're seeing, um, a character that we see appear quite a few times throughout the video that we just saw. Who is she? Because she seems like she's very important to V and also to Solomon Reed in some sense. Yeah, exactly. The third, I would say, most important character in the story next to Reed, uh, Reed and V. Um, personally, my favorite one. Um, I think it's because she is just, for me at least, she feels so similar to V yeah. in certain ways. I always imagine that maybe in another universe it could be actually V who's working for NUSA and Songbird being the street punk, uh, really. Um, and I hope players will perceive her, that was at least our goal, as kind of a mirror to V and to themselves that okay. by interacting with Songbirds they will gain a new perspective. Mm -hmm on these motivations, these actions, um, these goals. And um, yeah, it will just like make Songbird somehow interesting to them. But actually, you played the game. So like, what, what was your take on her? Actually, it's one of the characters that I instantly fell in love with. But I also see that she might be a character that some players might not enjoy because she's she also has a lot of layers to her and the motivations and what she does and also how she's kind of interacting with V can be seen as helping or maybe not exactly. I don't want to spoil anything. Um, but yeah, she seems to be kind of like this divisive character. Yeah, and uh, actually we had plenty of um, internal tests. Mm -hmm. uh, our whole, not only dev team, but everyone in the studio playing the game. True. Uh, and um, uh, we are uh, uh, asking people how they felt about different characters. And in regards to Songbird and actually many other characters, which I'm very happy about, <laughs> uh, she was divisive. Like some people were like, oh, I just sympathize with her so much. She's, you know, she's my kind of, uh, my kind of person. And others were like, I absolutely don't understand her and like don't want to support her in any way. Um, and I think it's great, actually. I'm, I'm really happy about it uh, because I think like really good characters are not, don't have to be exactly always likable. Uh, you have to be able to understand them and empathize with them. You don't have to like them. And it's just like with real people, right? It's not like everyone likes everyone. We are different. Exactly. And this is what, where the magic is, I think, of yeah. like being real. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the, something that we actually talked about before. This is what makes characters real and relatable, that they're human, like they have different motivations. They are, you know, they're not, like we said previously, they're not linear. They have different things that are pulling them from different directions. And that's what makes it really, really cool. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Igor, amazing stuff. Thank, Thank you. you so much uh, you. for diving with me into the narrative part. Super interesting. Uh, it's really also good to know that you like when players are, um, you know, not agreeing in terms of like who they like or I dislike. So that's, that's also very important. Thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this exclusive deep dive into the official trailer. There will be more information coming about the expansion, so stay tuned to learn more.